At Harvard, a Danish scientist, Lena Howe, had the idea of using a condensate to slow down light. We all have this sense, you know, light is something that nothing goes faster than light uh, in vacuum. And if somehow we could use this system to get light down to, you know, at a, to a human level, I thought that was just absolutely fascinating. Lena Howe created a cigar-shaped Bose-Einstein condensate to carry out her experiment. She fired a light pulse into the cloud. The speed of light is around 186,000 miles per second, but when the pulse hits the condensate, it slows down to the speed of a bicycle. So the light pulse might start out being one to two miles long in free space. It goes into our medium. And uh, since the front edge enters first, that will slow down. The back edge is still in free space. That'll catch up, and that'll create that uh, uh, compression. And it'll end up being compressed from one to two miles down to 0 0.001 uh, micron, or even smaller than that. You could say, well, gee, it's easy to stop light, because I could just set a laser beam into a wall, and I would stop it. Well, the problem is you lose the information because it turned into heat. You can never get that information back. In our case, uh, when we stop it, the information is not lost because that's stored in the medium. And then when we have time to revive it, the system has all the information to revive the light pulse and it can move on. One day, ultra-cold atoms will probably be used to store and even process information. Even now, cold atoms are being turned into prototype quantum computers. As a quantum mechanic, I engineer atoms. To make a computer out of atoms, you have to somehow get atoms to register information and then to process it. Why, why build quantum computers? Because they're cool, it's fun, and we can do it. Right? I mean, we actually can take atoms, and if we ask them nicely, they'll compute. That's a lot of fun. I mean, have you ever talked to an atom recently and had it talk back? It's great. Uh, yes, look at that. Unlike ordinary computers, where each decision is based around a bit of information and is either a zero or a one, in the quantum world, the rules change. At first glance, a quantum computer looks almost exactly the same. But quantum mechanics is weird. It's funky, okay? It's weird. When you do quantum computing, you want to make this weirdness work for you. So now let's look at our quantum bit, or qubit. A qubit can not only be a zero or a one, it can also both be a zero and one at, at the same, same time. time. It's almost like a form of and parallel look computation, many worlds, but in a parallel computer, a one computer, processor does this, one processor does that. So you have that two processors doing this and that. Quantum in a computer quantum computer, you have many, only many one processor that's doing all the this same time. and that at the same time. <laughs> <laughs>